mahogany seven millimeter distance combobulator. I'm out here a thousand miles from my home. Hey y'all, today we are going to do a throwback, an old Dylan song off his very first self-titled record. If you're not familiar with this one, it is great. Dylan's voice, he doesn't even sound like Dylan on this record, real strange. I love the sound of the acoustic guitar on it, the harmonica, I could do without personally. <laughs> Don't get mad, comment below. Dylan's a bad harmonica player, I'm going to say it, I said it. He's not only bad, he's, he's almost terrible, he's certainly bad. I would argue he's a terrible harmonica player. I'm not saying I'm a good harmonica player, but Dylan's terrible. Song to Woody. This was requested. It's a great song. This first record's great. All those early Dylan records are beautiful. He's got a cool tone because he's picking way the heck over here, really trebly right around the bridge. It's a flat picking one. I wanted to do one where you guys are going to get this strum technique down where you're picking and then strumming. I did Moonlight Song before, but this is not a beginner one. It's pretty darn hard. This one is not that hard. What we're doing here is like the beginning of that bluegrass stuff where you're implying a melody inside the chord. So you're doing both as a guitarist. You're picking melody notes by single picking and then you're strumming, which is giving the accompaniment. So just like Travis picking can give that the illusion of two guitars, you know, the thumb doing one. This can also do that where you're picking a note. You got these little bass hits in between your strumming. And it's great. Start slow. I would say the only hard part about this song is the speed. It's fairly fast. I talk about this later on in the video. But song to Woody, whoever requested it, you know who you are. I don't remember who you are, but I wrote it down because you requested it. I should write down your names as well, but I don't. And also, Merry Christmas, everybody. Christ is born. Can you believe it? It's not like he was just born right now in 2021, but you know what I mean? Christ is born. We're, you know, he was born 2,021 years ago, but not, but even longer than that. In the beginning was the word. So essentially, I'm wishing him a happy birthday I infinitely late. I couldn't be more late. He, the word was there in the beginning. I was at infinity ago. I don't know. I'm sorry, Christ. I'm wishing you a happy birthday infinity years late. But I, you're a forgiving God, so I, th I hope you'll accept my <laughs> very belated, the most belated ever happy birthday. But sorry, song to Woody, Merry Christmas. I hope everyone has a, having a great holiday season, a great Christmas season. And I'm going to stop rambling. Let's get to song to Woody. I'm excited about it. I know you are. Yeah! It's music missing. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. <laughs> Measure one. So remember, a couple of different levels of difficulty. When you look at my tab, download it, they're all free. Throw the link up here at my website. When you download it, note that, so it's in three, four, which means there's always, typically it's pick, two, three. That's the simple way to do it. It's Dylan, so of course there's endless variation. So that's the simplest way, is just pick, down, strum, down, strum. But you can also do, so I'm just playing a G chord, capo two. And, and we'll go through different chords, but the basic idea is you're picking one low note, strumming twice. Sometimes he's doing pick, down, up, down. So it'd be pick, strum, down, up, down. Other times he's doing pick, down, down, up. So that's one, two, three, and. And other times he's doing down, ups for, for all of them. So it's pick, down, up, down. And it's up to you, use your ear, get a good feel for it, try different variations. Maybe on a few run-throughs you're doing it one way, then another run-through you're doing it a different way. And you're doing those different strum patterns and eventually you just wanna get a feel where you're putting in your own variation where you wish. And you're gonna notice sometimes this is just going to be um, natural, like you're not gonna have to think about it, you're just gonna kinda have fun with it. 
Other times, maybe it will be deliberate. Okay, I want this part to be busier, this part to be a little more sparse. So it's up to you, know that it's not super important. In a song like this, no matter how you strum it, whether it's up, down, up, down, whether it's down, down, up, it doesn't matter too much. The song still sounds really cool. So let's go into the first measure here. So measure one, we're on a G chord, capos two. We are just picking the sixth string. And then I'm doing down, up, down, up. I'm gonna do it the complicated way here, make it a little busier. Pick, down, up, down, up. One, two, and three, and. As always, with this pick, you want it to be light, right? I'm not holding it super tight. I'm not really stiff, right? If I allow no give on this thing, it sounds horrible. Um, I'm holding the pick fairly light, so it's more like, think of like a paintbrush, or I don't know, you're cleaning or doing something. So it's pick, down, up, down, up. It's a really light touch. I'm letting the string, um, I'm letting it push. The, see how I'm like dropping, I'm going down, but I'm not holding it taut, so it doesn't stay parallel to the ground, right? That's too rough. I'm letting it, uh, you know, I'm not putting up with that resistance. So you can see how the string bends pick bends when I go down at an angle and then when I come back up it goes at an angle as well. I'm really exaggerating to show you what I do but the pick is that loose in my hands. If you were to come up to me right now you would just very easily be able to pull that pick right out of my fingers. It's, it's not tight right you don't <laughs> you don't want it to resist that strongly. Middle combobulator and when I'm doing those down, up, down, ups, I'm not playing all six strings. You want this to sound like two different guitars. So this picking is one guitar sound. Then there, I'm aiming for the top four strings. You can hit five if you want to. You can hit three if you want to. It doesn't have to be super precise, but experiment with being precise. You know, there, there's no harm in doing that and having that more control. And you can get a different sound. Here's just the top three. Top four. A little bit fuller. Here's five of them. Pick and then hit all other five. To me, that's bigger than it needs to be. But this is what you definitely don't want to do: is you don't want to pick and then strum all six. Because now that boom, you want that to ring out boom. If you hit all of them, that low sound is no longer ringing because you're strumming it again and destroying that illusion of like bass and treble. Measure two, it'll go quicker now. I gave you all my little technique tips, I think. So measure two, we're, we're still holding on that G chord. And here we just hammer the fifth string. I have open, I'm lifting it open and hammering it down. Now, some guys will get rid of that ring finger because it's hard for them to get a good clean hammer on with that finger there. Um, both are fine. I keep my finger there typically. So make sure you're using fingertips only. And we're hammering the fifth string open to two. And then same thing, down, up, down, up on the higher four strings. So together we have six, then hammer the five. Measure three, I think, is one of the harder measures in the song because up to speed, it's tricky. We're still on a G. He lifts the fifth string, so it's open. Then we're picking up on all the, on the top four. So five. Finger back down on the sixth string, third fret, then back to open. And that's the measure. But when it's up to speed, it's hard to get those quick ups in there. So if you're doing it up to speed and that's too hard for you, it would be fine to just do and then pick up the strumming in the next measure. So adjust it to your level of difficulty on that measure. Measure four, back to the simple, pick the sixth string, down, up, down, up. Measure five, we have a hammer on the fourth string, open to two. Open two on the fourth string, down, down, or sorry, hammer, down, up. That's what we got. Hammer, down, up, and then we pull off on the fifth string. So hammer on the fourth, open to two, down, up. Then you have to move that middle finger right before you pick on the fifth string. So it's a two open pull off on the fifth string. six, picking the sixth string, down, down, up. Let's just go to measure seven. Now we're doing open on the fourth string. And down, down, up, fourth string, down, down. Again, don't, don't get too concerned about when to do the down and the down up. Dylan varies it all the time. 
I'm just giving you variation. You could, you could always be doing down, up, down, up. So let's go for measure five. Hammer, down, up, pull off, pick. Down, up, down, up, fourth string. Down, up, down, up. And that's the entire intro. Let's play through it slow from the top. Two, three, four. there when I hit that fourth string open in that last measure then I'm really only picking the top three because I want that fourth string to ring so I'm only hitting the strings higher than it in pitch but underneath it right fourth string only pick the top three so that fourth rings out one other little technique note if you really want this to sound like Dylan's recordings it, it's remarkable how trebly his sound is on this first record it's to me, it's totally unique. I, I like a lot of Dylan records. Actually, not that many, but but the first several are fantastic. A lot I could do without. But um, the the first album is so unique. His voice is like, totally different than any other record. And the playing is so cool because he's got that acoustic and he's way over here. Even his arm is way over here. And he's picking. When you pick, that's why I like you have these different pickups on, a, on an electric guitar, right? Your neck pickup, your bridge pickup. So he's kind of emulating that without a pickup because it's an acoustic. But even where you pick, right? A lot of people don't know this. Like, this is going to sound way warmer if you're up here, right? It's different overtones as opposed to here. Right? You get a totally different timbre. Listen to how treble that sounds, trebly. <laughs> so that's what Dylan's doing. He's picking it way over here on his acoustic. Oops. You get the idea of just how that totally transforms the tone and even the thickness of your pick is going to change your tone too now i'm not like a nerd about this stuff uh, when when people talk music specs and gear and and all this stuff i admit that there's value in it but i also like i should probably care more i don't really care i like to play my guitar i don't often nerd out about all of that stuff people always ask what kind of guitar do you use and this and that it's just like I don't know, I got some kind of Gretsch. I don't even play out of an amp. I literally like run it through my my Scarlet, you know, Scarletti, whatever this brand is, Focusrite interface. And then I add like a little bit of reverb, post-production, like a tiny bit of compression and I call it a day. So I'm not a gear nut, I'm not a tone nut. I don't know what kind of guitars Dylan plays, but I will teach you how to play the song. So let's keep going. <laughs> That's the intro. Already did it. Let's start the verse, learn a few learn a few bars, and then we'll sing a bit of it together. Let's do it. So measure nine, if you downloaded the tab, remember. It's all free, all the tabs, nothing behind a paywall here. So measure, or sorry, eight, I guess we're on. The start of the verse. This is going to be pretty easy for you. We're picking six, down, up, down, up, then hammering again on the fourth, open to two. Then we have a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. Again, you can do pick, down, up, down, up, or just pick, down, down. If this chord is new to you, let me explain it. If you got it down, just skip ahead a minute or so. We've got a regular D chord, and we're using our thumb to play that second fret. So it's a D chord, but instead of the F sharp only being up top, we have the F sharp in the bass. That's why it's called, it's a slash chord, D slash F sharp. Play a D with an F sharp as the lowest note is what that means. If that's too hard, I know some people don't like doing the thumb trick. I used to do this. I remember when I was a beginner guitarist, I would play the D with these other fingers, freeing up my pointer finger. That's acceptable as well. And if you really don't want to do either way, you could just play a regular D chord. It's not going to be the end of the world. So measure eight again, just a G, six string, hammer the fourth. I want again do that strum variation however you want you don't have to follow the tab I'm just giving you different ideas because he is all over the place let's keep going measure 12 we got this kind of hammer on idea again hammer on four down up then we pull off on five we already saw that then back to the G measure 13 then open on the fourth string what kind of a 
almost halfway through it. Let's sing to that and make sure you got it. Middle combobulator. Here's the top of the verse with the vocals. We'll do it slow a few times. Two, it's in three, four, so one, two, three. I'm out here a thousand miles from my home One more time, a little slower I'm out here a thousand miles from my home Nice, satisfying picking Sorry I don't have the acoustic. I don't even have a nice acoustic guitar anymore. So deal with the Gretsch. You, you play it with proper Dylan tone with your solid top spruce mahogany seven millimeter distance arch diameter perplexing middle combobulator deep rosewood full bodied arch top guitar, whatever it is you play. Measure 15, just a C chord. Again, strum pattern however you want. Then it's a G chord, but we put the B in the bass, so we just need this. I would probably still put my pinky or ring finger down on the third fret, because if you accidentally strum more notes than that, you know, the tab, I only did these three, the second, the third, and the fourth. I don't, you probably should put your pinky down in case you go a little too high. I feel like he's being a little more sparse when he's doing that part. Could be wrong, it's really hard to hear exactly how many strings he's hitting. So we just have a C chord. Right, a simplified G chord, just the B in the bass. And then a D chord, but he plays the fifth string, he plays the A in the bass here. Back to G. And then the same thing we've seen before, hammer on the fourth string, pull off on the fifth. So if we take it from that C chord with the vocals, it's walking road of the men have gone down. So I don't think I gave you 20 and 21 a moment ago, but it, but it's the same ending as we did that first little line, just G and the fourth string. And we'll keep going. So now we're on 22, kind of like the third line of music here. G chord again, hammer is the fourth, then here it's a little different, well not really, C chord, then 25 is a full G chord, right, picking that sixth string in the bass, and we're hammering on four again, pulling off five, back to sixth string, fourth string, Oop. and then we got measure 27, sorry I'm scrolling here, Gets a little, little, oh, um, what am I talking about? 29, I meant. Gets a little busier here. So 29, simple, pick the sixth. Let's check out 30. We're hammering on four. So let's look at that. Hammering on the fourth string, open two. Then I'm picking down, up. And then on my final down, so it's hammer, down, up. When I do that last down, I'm pulling off the fourth string. And I'm strumming, I don't, again, I don't know if he's strumming all of them. But that works, or he can just strum the second, third, and the fourth. You don't have to be super exact. It's Dylan, he's never super exact. But that's it. Hammer the fourth, down, up. Then that last strum has the pull off built into it. Strum, and pulling off. So it's pick. hammering on the fifth string then 34 is a D D chord pick the fifth string though then a G and I think we're near the end let's just keep going I'm gonna keep talking you through it here 37 hammering on the fourth pull off on the fifth and just back to a G sixth string I did fast forward, but I don't want to bore you. I think 
you know, once you watch maybe the first five minutes of this video, you probably got the idea. And pull up the tab. You'll get used to the pattern. And again, Dylan varies it up every time. So you have to do the exact same hammer on. You have to always do the sixth to the fourth. Doesn't matter too much. Get the song flow down and just know when when these chords are changing on which set of lyrics. And that's the way I would go about doing it. Let's sing it a few more times. I'll give you some slow run-throughs, but already a nice pat on the back. You did it. That's the entire song. This is one where I would probably go to YouTube and put in like 3-4 drum beat at, I don't know how many BPM this song is. Um, I don't know, start at like 100, 120 maybe, 130, because he's playing it pretty quick. And to get to his speed without accidentally missing strings is gonna be difficult. Don't try to do it at his speed right away, please. Promise me that. Say it, say Mike, I promise you. Thank you, okay. So start slow, even like how I'm doing it, making it, make it like a really slow ballad and then build up. You're doing yourself a huge favor if you're exact, go slow and be exact. Build up the speed only a little bit, push the envelope a little bit, but still be exact. Only once in a while, and I'm talking literally like 10 seconds out of every 10 minutes, do you really want to blast it? I don't even, I wasn't playing the right pattern there, but once in a while you do want to blast it just to see if your hand is capable of, of doing that crazy kind of like bluegrass kind of picking. But don't make a habit of doing that because then you're just going to be practice practicing sloppy playing. You want to push it occasionally just to see if you can do it, you know, fake it till you make it, right? Get your, get your hand going just to get used to it. Be explosive in very short bursts. Think of them as like sprints, you know, you're only gonna sprint for like 10, 20 seconds if you're in really good shape and then you're gonna slow down. Same thing here, most of your practice should be barely pushing the envelope, right? Maybe a little quicker than your jog. You wanna stay there and not overdo it. But we got this song going. Let, let's sing it and play it slow. Congrats again. We did it. Let's do some slow run-throughs with the vocal. All right, we'll go from the top first. Let's do the intro together. That'll be our tempo. One, two, three. Let me start the verse. One, two. I'm out here a thousand miles. Measure 22. One, two, three. I'm seeing a new world of people and things. Hip hop. Pick up, back to the verse, right? So it repeats all the way to measure eight. So coming on to that last one, let me do the last um, two. Then right into eight. Hey, hey, Woody Guthrie, I wrote you a song. About a funny old world that's coming along. fanatics I don't know my lyrics I apologize that's the tune there's really not much else variations on that 
Yeah, uh, does he play the harmonica on this one? He probably takes a break and does the chords without the vocals, maybe, at some point. But that's it. Just subtle variations on that main theme. Go slow, sing it slow, and congrats. I'll see you next time. Mike's Music Method. Play it with proper Dylan tone with your solid top spruce mahogany seven millimeter distance arch diameter perplexing middle combobulator deep rosewood full bodied arch top guitar whatever it is you play. <laughs>